What is happening, YouTubers? This is Joe Bravo with Mo Bravo Knife Reviews, and I'm here with Dry and Lynn. At NYC Knife Life. And this is Northeast EDC podcast episode number five. And this is coming on Thursday, June the 2nd. And there is a very, very special day on Friday. Friday. Dry, what's happening on Friday? Wait, today? Today's Wednesday, dude. Well, fuck you. It was Monday on Monday, and now today <laughs> is Wednesday. So I don't know what to tell you, man. It's been a fucked yeah. up week. Yeah, but uh, I bought one knife today. That's about it. That's it? Yep. What'd you buy last week? Last week, I bought like a really expensive glass. Like, uh, <clears throat> well, We talked about that glass. Don't even get in the fucking pirate life brass. Yeah. All right, so tell us what tell everybody i know what knife you bought and i'm gonna laugh at you about it but go ahead all right so um chris Reeves has been slowly rolling out s45 vn Who? steel blades never heard of him chris reeve you never heard of chris reeve i <laughs> just kidding no man. i'm just joking um yeah so i f- was like perusing the internet like i do like every day like of different like knives and stuff and see like what's out there that like nobody's like really picking up on and uh i just happened to come across like m- the monkey's edge website and uh that's one of the knife dealers that i like frequently just like check what they have and just by coincidence they had a s45 vn large uh plain jane in cosi uh and it's double lugs too i think yeah it's it should be double lugs um All right, you gotta tell me if you can uh you know spidey flick that thing I'm probably not going to be able to spidey flick a freaking CRK. My buddy Justin, fucking Justin Brantley of High Grain, whatever. I'm going to find it because it's my boy. Uh, He does a spidey flick, high grain Mm -hmm. designs. Find him on Instagram. He makes the best wallets around. Uh, But it's. I actually need a new wallet, so I might hit that up. You're too poor for this fucking wallet. Don't even go there. How how much are his wallets? I've bought like $100 wallets before. Uh, Remember that time I told you you're too poor for this wallet? Yeah. Okay, so, so go two, check out his stuff. It is two four killer, <laughs> killer. And uh, I got a down payment on one, and I'm so excited for it. So, is he making uh, like five hundred dollar wallets? He's making what people want to spend. You're gonna say, oh, is that guy selling a fucking mini areas for two thousand dollars on auction? You know, just fucking cuts the same as my razor blade. So shut the fuck up about what <laughs> he's selling his wallets for. It's good quality stuff. But uh, yeah, the one day. Uh, he showed me a video about Spidey flicking. I, he likes the Chimera by CKF, and uh, he's reverse uh, Spidey flicking uh, some Chris Reeves knife. I forget what it was. I'm going, bro. You post that video up, and the guy's like, "Oh man, I can reverse Spidey flick that." I go, "There's like a, you know a handful of nuts that have the ability to reverse Spidey flick, or uh, if you get an Insigno blade, there's some people out there that can actually front flip." uh insigno and cosi or an insigno uh you know 31 so i just really think it's funny out there when you see guys that have the ability with the dexterity even doing shit like jake you know uh bearded gear would you ever do that here here's my 900 hundred dollar quantum and i'm gonna just you know rotate that while i'm walking or that the guy who was on the scooter guy on the scooter I, made a video I, and i mean got, like if you got the himself. skills if you got the skills like i mean flaunt it you know if you're confident enough in doing that kind of stuff where you're just flipping not flipping knives and doing knife tricks while walking and stuff and like being extra cautious and careful i mean like i did see that one video uh of jake um twirling his knife around like a like one of those like parks that he usually walks at and it was just over this canyon and he just drops it it was a strider he drops it in the canyon and <laughs> it just goes i'm i mean like i i was like okay it's probably a fake because like jake wouldn't just do that so and then like four instagram stories later like of course it was like a fake one that he had so it was just a clone that he just destroyed which is fine because it's just a clone but um but yeah like super excited about the Incosi comes Saturday hopefully the USPS gods like will be like extra gracious and deliver it like a day early sometimes it happens like that you know oh I know I shipped a knife on Friday and it made it to Texas by Tuesday with the long weekend uh USPS priority today 
And uh, I shipped the same guy at night on Saturday and it hit his mailbox today, which is Wednesday, you know, and, Mm -hmm. you know, it's great when that happens, you know, hooray for USPS, you know, uh, when it works, it's great. It's relatively inexpensive and knock on wood, it's pretty reliable. So, you know, Uh, until you're like me and you get that one package that's like forever lost in USPS purgatory, they canceled Actually, no, they didn't cancel it. They closed out my claim and labeled it resolved without ever contacting me after I filed the claim. So I had to call them today. And then they're like, oh, and like talk to customer service about it. And like, the, thank God the customer service lady was actually helpful and was like, okay, we'll just like move this. We'll reopen this and move this up the ladder of importance, basically in layman's terms, like, I, like my claim is at the can I speak to your manager status so hopefully I hear something back with either within the next two days or like next Monday to see listen and, and I'm not you know poo-pooing this for you mm-hmm. uh, on the grand scheme of things and on the knives that this could happen to you on right. you got off lucky oh yeah definitely you know if this was my Shira Gordov Kami it cost me $1,500 or uh, I don't know what else, uh, you know, name something. A V4 Spectre I just sent, you know. A mini, a mini Arius. <laughs> yeah, Mini Arius. Yeah, it's going to be the, the running joke of uh, Grail of all Grails. And it was funny. Did you see the Roosevelt got um, auctioned off yesterday? The Roosevelt got auctioned off for, I think it was like $1,700. It was sixteen ninety, dollars uh, And you know, that's a table price of like nine hundred dollars. And uh, you know, that's that's a lot of money for a nine hundred dollar knife, right? It is, but then like I mean, there's the old like saying, well not really old saying, it's more like repetitive beating a dead horse saying. Uh it's the whole like a knife is worth whatever somebody's willing to pay for it, you know. And if that's somebody's grail, obviously they're gonna like pay like what they can afford or find reasonable in their head or just justifiable, which reasonable isn't necessarily justifiable. And uh, if everything clicks in their head and they're like, okay, I need it immediately. Like who's to say like that knife to them isn't worth that much, you know? Yeah. And I agree because I have three of them or I have one right now. I had three, I got one, uh, two at a deal and a combo and uh, I ended up selling it to my buddy. And then, I had buyer's remorse or seller's remorse and I had to buy another one and I bought one for that price that we just talked about. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had it. It was great. Was it better than the fat carbon fiber one? No. So I let it go. And, you know, like you said, was it worth it? Maybe, maybe not. But, you know, to somebody else it was because I don't have that knife anymore. And, uh, right. you know, that person's enjoying it, no doubt. Right. Like, I mean, like, f- for example, like back to Chris Reeves, like if I ever come across like a lo- like a large Sabenza, we the people, I might have to spend two grand on it. Is it worth two grand? Fuck no, it's not. It's not a two grand knife, but it's just so rare that I mi- and I missed out on it because like I wasn't into knives like around the time it came out at table. But like if I run into that knife anywhere or if somebody DMs it to me, I'm just going to have to fucking pay it. Like, like, you know, like it's just like one of those things. It's like one of those quote unquote growl knives, you know, and also like same thing with like um, the Prometheus design, like a uh, wave on in Kosi's and Sabenza's like if I ever come across like one large one of those like I'll pay like the premium for it because I think that particular design on that knife is pretty cool and <clears throat> and which is like super weird because like if I see like a cool like spider co or whatever like I'm I'm just gonna wait it out because like even like sprint runs like rare sprint runs like I'm still gonna wait it out because I know like over time like in the next few years those will drop in price like for instance like RECP well th- those aren't sprint runs but like they're exclusive but like you see the REC PM2s like go from like 350 when they first came out to 300 and now like I'm seeing them go for 2 to 250 
No, so, I understand. That's like the Kami. You know, the Kami mm-hmm. was fifteen hundred. They released three hundred of them. Let that sink in. And every one of them was bought. And then all of a sudden, market saturation. Everybody had a whole bunch of fifteen hundred dollar Nias that they couldn't deploy because the detent was so strong. And mm-hmm. they hit the market. And you know, you see them almost all the way down to eleven hundred dollars at some points. And uh, you know. That's a significant drop on a brand new knife that was rare and exclusive. But again, you know, this 300 uh, quantity exclusive, you know, and uh, maybe with that, do we talk about Vero and uh, the secondary for the Vero market has certainly taken a dip as well because uh, with the addition that uh, Joseph made with the wave and the reserves, I think, uh, FOMA is almost a thing of the past at this point. What do you think? Um, I think FOMA is still there. It's just like, uh, it's going to be there for the mini Axon, I think, because like the Axon is just a very popular model. I just think mini synapse. Uh, no, the mini Axon. Um, mini synapse, like, was like the pre-order. I don't think the mini synapse is going to do that well because it's a bit small. Like even When's for the a mini tiny Axon knife. coming out, I don't even know about that. I he's mentioned it like in previous lives, and but there's no like set date. It's probably going to be past like wave two axons until like he announces them, or sometime in the fall maybe, because like he still has to like do the neurons, right? So yeah, like, yeah, the double detent, right? Yeah. So um, so that's gonna be a ways away, but like I mean, like I'm down to get like my hands on a mini axon, no doubt. Um, but it's just, uh, I just don't think those part like a regular synapse, right? A regular Gen 1 or Gen 2 synapse, perfect tiny knife for like, per, like average size hands, in my opinion. Like that thing, amazing, right? The XL is a good like chopping knife, you know, like to do hard use stuff. And uh, I just think any knife that's smaller than the regular size synapse in the synapse line might be too small. Yeah, you, you know? know, I had a discussion with that with somebody else today, and it was almost like, you know, uh, you know, do you make another knife? And my response to that was, did the pre-sale sell out? <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> you know, every time you want to talk about uh, FOMO right. or, you know, should Joseph do something different, you go to look and it sold out. I it mean, sold I, out I, in seven minutes or whatever it was, but it sold out. So, right. At, at what point do you start saying that people are getting the knives that they want for the price that they want? And who cares about secondary at that point? You know, like, I mean, secondary prices are still going to be there. I just think, um, but they're not going to be like outrageous. They're still going to be like at the reasonable range. Like, for instance, like an Axon could sell for 450 550 range depending upon the configuration right like a braxon could sell for 550 easy um i just think the more knives the more of his models that he puts on the reserve list and uh the harder the secondary market is going to get hit because right now his the knives that the models he has on the second uh on the reserve is the axons only But it's so weird because, like, even the prices of impulses and mini impulses are going down. Like, I'm seeing, like, mini impulses being sold for, like, $300, like, in the secondary market, which is, like, unheard of. Yeah, I mean, I remember selling a couple of mini impulses back in the day over $500, you know, and they they cost me $500 secondary, you know? Yeah, and same, like, my first ever Vero was a $500 Vero impulse. Yeah. Gen, Gen 2, I think. Yeah. I believe it. You know, I really do. And uh, it's a quality knife. You know, I've got an um, impulse right now and I'm having a hard time moving at the point that I'm at. But, you know, it's still a sweet knife, you know. And this is, <laughs> I never mind having a knife that I really like that I can't move because, right. you know, that impulse probably has the best action of any of the Vero knives at this point. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, interesting to see how it all plays out in the next six months. I wish nothing but the best for Joseph and the Vero team. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, can't, I can't wait for my Axon pre-order uh, for the frame lock to come in. 
Uh, yeah, because same. the stone wash and the DLC is gonna look hot fire. I got DLC on DLC on DLC. I know you can put <laughs> it in. Uh, so you know how you were on Monkey Edge today and you found a Chris yeah. Reeve knife. Yeah. Well, right now on Recon One, they've got a shit ton of Chris Shira Reeve. Gordovs. No, Shira uh, Gordovs. Oh yeah, I, I was on Recon One today too. I've Did you them. see they had the F ninety five NL in the white storm carbon fiber inlay? Let's see. That they must have. Fire. They might. They might have just thrown it up. Uh, let's see. Uh, you could just ninety five. At all. Yep. So they've got the blue one still, the Arctic Storm, and mm-hmm. then they have the White Storm, which is like the white lightning kind of inlay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see it. I had the Jungle, and that's a quality knife. You know, it really is. And like you said, how rare is it that Recon One has production models in stock? You know, it's uh, baffling to be honest with you. They how, never how, have them. How rare is it for Recon One to have production models in stock and at like reasonable price? Well, I mean, it, that's <laughs> these are the, the prices that they are. You know, the problem is they never have them in stock. So, no, that's what I mean. Like a freaking like a, a Shirograph Quantum with a bronze titanium handle for like ten ninety five. That's super reasonable. Yeah, like, I, I agree. You know, I mean, I'm sitting here chomping at the bit. Do I pick up an F three NS and the bronze carbon fiber? uh because mm-hmm. that's that's a really decent price you know and i mm-hmm. i love that knife you know if i didn't already have my own f95 nl i would probably buy one but you know uh what's the rule never buy share girls at full price i know man it's so <laughs> tempting Shit. again again like with grails right so i would consider a 95t a grail so if I ever see like a 95T at retail at a website, I'm picking it up immediately. Yeah, I'm sure it would probably only be this website, but you know. Yeah. It's, uh... No, I've actually seen one on Nice Center. Really? Enough. Wow. Yeah. In stock? Yeah, in stock. That's like crazy. In the earlier, like probably like four months ago. Mm-hmm. So You know, this is probably all their inventory from TKI, to be honest with you. Maybe. This is whatever they didn't sell. They threw it on there. And I'm laughing to all hell that it's actually still in stock at this moment. How often does stuff on Recon 1 stay in stock, you know? Yeah, like never. And that really just, you know, extends to the fact that the people that were at TKI to spend the money, what what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And the people that also spend the money on Shirogorovs are all waiting to spend their money at Blade. And, uh, you know, we've said it, we've said it, we've said it. That secondary market right now is down and a lot of hot knives are coming to market. And it is funny to see, you know, like you said, Recon 1 having knives in stock that are sitting at this point, you know? Dude, I have my proxy just, like, waiting to get a DLC Arius at Blade. Oh, yeah? But I'm like... But he's proxying for other people too, so I'm like literally like third on the list. So I don't even know if I'll like if he if he'll like even score one for me. But well, if he does, that's what I told my buddy. Um, I know who your buddy is, and you probably know my buddy. But yeah. I said, listen, if it works out, grab it. I give you the money, no problem. But right. if you're not going to get what you want, then no, I'm not going to ask you to fucking proxy for me. Yeah, exactly. That's what that's what, what I said. That's literally what I said to hit in, uh, my proxy is like, get what you want first. I come like after whatever you want, you know, yeah, it's, you know, because I don't know if Bill's going to limit people. There's only a certain amount per, you know, the, uh, shitty part is, the shitty part is my proxy is a very big Koenig fan. And he's probably going to pick up four DLC areas himself. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> initials JS. Yep. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's cool, man, because uh, that's, you know, and, and I don't know. What do you do? Did you get mad? Why even offer to be a proxy at that point if I know that you're going to buy four of them for yourself? Well, I mean, like, there's other tables, too. No, you know? I know, but you know what yeah. I'm saying. I yeah, mean, yeah. Uh, if you're going to proxy, proxy. If you're right. going to be the guy who's going to get the thing that you want to proxy, then guess what? I'm going to go find another proxy that doesn't want the thing that I want so that I can get the thing that I want and that's called a proxy. But but that's the thing. Everybody at Blade, 
that knows anything about knives is probably going to be at the code nick table i agree everybody should be <laughs> there everybody should be looking at the mini areas everybody looking at the dlcs that purple is out of control man out of control the only the only beef i have about the dlc blades is none of them have a black handle i know and none of them have a <laughs> dlc handle right no but the backside I think is Anna like some of the backsides are Anno bronze and Anno blue. But that's just gonna be something to rub off, you know, and that's yeah. the coolest thing about the DLC. The DLC Gen 2 that I have was really tough. And I thought that that was a uh, a good knife. If I was to ever make an Arius mm-hmm. into a, a user, I think that would have been a really nice configuration. Problem is I'm not a Gen 2 flipper uh fan. Uh when I ride the lock bar on some of those hard detents. It hurts the finger, and uh, I think I did it on a video one time. I started bleeding because I rode the lock bar and hit that upswept flipper on the Gen 2s Oof. and uh, cut myself, you know, and it happens. Yeah. But, you know, who wants a fucking knife that they got to worry about cutting themselves on the flipper tab? My first ever Arius was a Gen 2, and that almost immediately turned me off from Arius's as a whole. But Jake, Bearded Gear, was like, try out gen 4 and so i was like okay so then long story short when dlt did their drop back in february i picked up a gen 4 and i was like wow this is like night and day it's a completely different knife and that's because of the flipper tab yep and they did a different job with the um uh the action you know it's Mm -hmm. so funny um every areas has a different action Uh, i've noticed that my favorite action is on my polished polished chamfers yes and uh my 57 has a great action i could ride the lock bar no problem but from having 17 different areas i'll be honest i think my uh uh polished chamfer really has the best action out of any of them and it's just the way it is you know i don't know what to tell you it <laughs> is it the best action for somebody else, I don't know. They could like the 57 action better. But, you know, having a knife, getting used to that knife, getting used to that action, getting used to that detent. It's funny how the one that you have the longest tends to be the one that you think is the best action, you know. And nothing's really been able to compare to it, which is why I haven't dumped it because it's a sweet-ass knife. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that, like, uh uh, by the I way, don't... that's a Gen 4 Batch 4, which I think has the best action out there, but that's just my opinion. Like, um, I I had the polished chamfers one. I managed to get it on a drop from the Codenig website, and I think that's the best feeling action that I've ever, like, held. And, it, like, I've owned, like, probably a total of six different areas now, and the polished chamfers one by far had the best action, and I just don't understand why. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It is literally the best action. The textures are great. The Gen Four textures I had were great, uh, but uh, even the Fifty Sevens, I'm telling you, it's it's a nice action. There's nothing wrong with it, and the detents tune perfectly. There's no doubt about that. But um, just That's... something about it. it's not the polished chamfered, and uh, you know, it doesn't make it less of a knife. I mean. I got Damascus backspacer. I got a blue pivot. I got blue hardware. It's probably the prettiest 57 out there. And mm. uh, I still think my polished Jamford has a better action on it. Go figure, right? Right. Definitely. So any funny sales stories? Yeah, I got one for you today. And uh, it's funny <laughs> because I'm going to tell this story and I'm going to shit talk this guy. Uh, but he actually <laughs> bought the knife today. So oh, I just thought it was funny. Uh, guy messaged me about uh, my skiff and he goes, Hey, uh, I, do you have more pictures? Sure, I got more pictures. In fact, I got a video of my YouTube review. So he watches the video, or at least, you know, I sent it to him and he goes, Oh man, you know, I'm a stickler for purple. I said, Oh, great, this is purple. He goes, Um, what size blade is it? I'm going, Are you kidding me? This is the knife that you've been looking for. I gave you a video. Yeah, I know it's 14 minutes long. It's got every single piece of information that you could want in there. And it just happened to be I was at work today. So it's not like I could spend the time to talk to the person about every detail. Mm-hmm. But he did proceed to ask every detail. And I answered every detail. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't think he was going to buy the knife. 
But he came back about 20 minutes, a half hour later after we talked and made an offer and we made the deal. And I just, again, um, patience. I could have wrote this dude off and said, you know, here's a guy who's kicking tires. I'm going to blow him off. I'm going to have a snide comment, blah, 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 blah. It would have been so easy to do. But I didn't. Right. I kept cool. I told him that everything was in the video. I answered the questions. I talked to him. He could have Googled it, you know, but I just, uh, you know, took a swallow. And uh, I had a lot of action on it, too. So I could have been a douchebag. But I didn't. And the guy made me an offer. We made a deal. And I'm happy that it's going to him. And, uh, you know, John up in Maine, I hope you dig that drifter. Uh, I'm sorry if I had, was a little short, but you know, when you're at work, sometimes, uh, you got to focus on what you got to focus on. Uh, but you know, thank you for purchasing that. And, uh, I hope you enjoy the hell out of that thing, you know, but I just, sometimes I think it's funny when the guys tell you that they really want to know about your knife. They really want the knife and they have no idea how big the knife is sometimes, you know, it ain't like it's a custom knife. It's not like it's a one-off. It's not like, and I get that you don't know. That's fine. I, again, I didn't have any problem answering questions, but man, it's so funny that, um, people don't spend the five minutes to investigate the knife to figure out what type of knife it is or what size or what steel or what action, you know, before saying, Hey, do you have more pictures of the knife that I know is X amount and I can't afford it, or it's not the blade size, or it's not the blade shape, or it's not the blade steel. Um, and the one piece of advice is don't be a dick. Like I could have been today and, uh, have a little patience because, you know, not everybody is doing this every minute of the day like we are. Right, Ryan? I wouldn't say I do it every minute of the day. <laughs> I know, I know, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, totally. Not everybody is just like this deep in the rabbit hole of the EDC knife world. Yep. And, you know, like I said, uh, what's Reddit say on knife swap at the end? Just don't be a dick. So I'm going to heed my own advice. Uh, he'd read its advice, and uh, I'm glad I wasn't a dick today. I'm glad I made a sale, and I'm glad I got somebody that likes the color purple and that has been wanting to check out a skiff knife, uh, a really great example of what they have to offer. Yeah, definitely. So, like, um, I managed to sell the CRK... 31 bog oak that i had and then i also managed to sell my t full ti chavez uh tiny ass knife tack and i sold the tack the chavez just because like i couldn't bring myself to like it <laughs> uh, i had like, one in g10 and i tell you the same thing the pocket clip sucked i had a great action all right i'm not gonna deny that i like the flipper on it the flipper, oh yeah it had a positive action riot does a great job with action had mm -hmm. a great blade um riot does a great job with the blade uh but functionally for a fifth pocket or something that was going to go into my pocket with that clip i just doesn't work for me what about you well, the the clip kept catching and I tried backing out the screws, like you said, and it still kept catching. Like it was just like a really bad hot spot for me. And it just might be the type of jeans I'm wearing, but like it, it was just like a no go. And just the fact that it was it felt it didn't feel like a knife to me. Like it felt more like a box cutter. It was just like a, a rectangle with a knife that flips out, basically. And, like, by saying rectangle, I mean, like, just the handle itself. It wasn't, like, I don't know. It just, to me, it, the ergos were off. And it's just, like, it, it was like me holding a tiny box with a knife that flipped out. No, That's I what agree. It was. And you look at, they make the chub. So it was mm -hmm. probably a derivative of the chub. But, you know, um, listen, do I think it's a bad knife? No, I just don't think it's a knife for me. You know, uh, if I wanted to hold a small knife, you know, I'd carry my Roosevelt. There'd be right. no reason in the world to carry a talk uh, in lieu of my Roosevelt. I know one's a $700 knife. The other one's a $250 knife. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that what Roosevelt executes in their design, uh, or I'm sorry, OZ machinery, excuse me, uh, executes in their design uh, far outweigh, you know, and, and I know you guys poo poo, but. I'd rather a 940 any day of the week over a talk, you know, I'd right, rather a PM2 exactly. any day. I'd rather I got my Sage one. I'd rather my Sage one. I, I'm going to say it right now and you can hear it first. 
I'd rather carry my ZDP 189 Dragonfly by Spider Co. in uh, what the hell was it? Lotus Racing Green, British Racing Green. Right. I always go to the Lotus. If if I wanted to like carry like a tiny knife like that, I would probably just carry a mini bug out, you know. Yeah, I never had a mini bug out. And my wife, her EDC carrier that I tossed in her purse is a bug out. And mm-hmm. I gave that to her because I thought the bug out was a little too small for me. Uh, bug out's know. like the perfect size. No. Listen, uh, I'm going to change pace real quick because we mm-hmm. have a message from uh, somebody while we're talking. He wants to know which one to keep. Would you rather have a Shira Gorov? F95T from the Recon 1 show, or would you rather have an F95 Icebreaker? I'd rather have the Icebreaker. Yeah, because you don't like the yellow, do you? No, I don't like the yellow. And I think that's so funny because I think that yellow is hot as hell. Um, I think I'm going to go with the, the, the F95T. Like, the just I like from what I've seen, like on the show pages and like everything like talking to people and stuff it's just the icebreaker is also like a more sought after knife i understand well, it's right now come on right i mean like it's a hot commodity right it now it is but you know that that milling pattern kind of looks like the uh hattie club and that was on g10 uh you know do i think that 13 to 1500 dollars for an f95 is worth it but joe when you break out the icebreaker it's the icebreaker i know and it's not as and shit and he's got the lanyard bead on it and it's awesome it really is but you can use the icebreaker at a party as an icebreaker no you can't (laughs) if they have a a goose made out of ice you could a what a goose a a goose made out of ice i don't know one of those like ice Uh, statues the swans you mean you dick (laughs) (laughs) same bird same bird yeah you know what man i don't know i know right now. wasn't the ugly duckling like mistaken as a goose and it turned out to be a swan uh, it could have been but i'm gonna tell you man i don't care to spend overpriced money i would mm-hmm. rather have my f95 nl over right. either of those knives right now right and i mean like if you want to own a shiro Gorov just for the sake of owning a shiro Gorov, then like go with like their like 500 to 600 dollar options those like i mean like my first ever Shiro Gorov was a 95 NL like uh, with the black micarta inlay like there's nothing wrong with it yeah I agree I had that F3 on the channel with single row bearing and it's mm-hmm. fine there's no doubt about it it's fine you know I'm a action whore so I want multi row bearing MRBS yeah. uh, it was funny I showed that uh, knife today to my Polish buddy and he's like oh it says mm's on the uh, inside <laughs> If you ever look on the inside of a multi row bearing system, titanium, no. uh, it actually says MRBS. So you looked at it, it's like, oh, it says Mooms. And I was laughing because he didn't know nothing. And, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he didn't know. It's like, oh, yeah, it's multi row bearing system. And I was, a, shake, I was shaking my head, you know? That should be a t shirt now. Yeah, right. Another meme. Mooms. 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 All right, so uh, that's our first uh, message during the chat that we got to talk to. That's fun. Uh, unfortunately, all of our friends that were going to come on the show to talk about Knife uh, Blade uh, are all packing for Blade as we're doing this podcast. So I'm a little salty that they didn't have the time to get on the Zoom call. But uh, maybe we should just talk about some of the exhibitors that are on the list and yeah. some of the stuff that we're excited for. Yeah, take the lead. No, uh, well, we already talked about the mini Arius. So if yeah. you haven't stopped over by um, Koenig's uh, table, you're doing yourself a disservice because he's probably going to have some of the hottest fire out there. Uh, he's, he's probably going to be making the most money. Well, it's so funny. The mini Arius is going to have an auction. And, you know, it's so funny. We almost have tunnel vision because I'm sure somewhere there's a forum with guys that have a shit ton of more money than we do. And they're going to go to Blade and they're going to spend 10 grand on a knife that we know absolutely nothing about because it's specific to them. Uh, But for the people that we deal with in all of the different Facebook groups that we're a part of, you know, the Arius is definitely one of the top dogs. And I think Bill and his team have done a fantastic job of bringing some hot fire 
So um, I'm very interested to see. They've got the mini Arius. It is a prototype. It is going to be auctioned off, or at least that's, you know, I, 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 I don't, that's the, the, the plan right now, right? From what you saw on his Instagram page, right? Yeah. So if it does get auctioned off, I'm very, very, very interested to hear what the mini Arius went for as a prototype, you know? I mean, it's how, how many, though? Like one of one? I have no idea. And I'm sure you'll find that out throughout the week, you know, but is it a reason to go check out the mini areas prototype that's going to be auctioned off? Of course. And so the fucking buzz in the world, what are you going to do? Yeah. All right. So we talked about Koenig. Uh, The next I'm going to talk about is Brian Brown. His, his lineup was fire. It really is. Did you see the eight knives he had in the Facebook page? I think it was eight or 10. Dude. uh, The engraving one. I'm pretty sure like all combined is probably like the price of a new car. Oh, I mean, definitely. He got a Hyundai or a Kia, you know, but uh, <laughs> I think the engraving one's going to be his auction knife. And I really do think he's going to kill it with that one. Oh yeah. That, that, that thing is so beautiful, dude. Yeah, it really is. Um, it really is. Um, I think everybody should go check out blade gallery. Uh, my buddy, Anton van der Westfusen and the Boudica that everybody sees on my page. I know I'm talking to Anton, you know, because we're, we're tight like that, you know? No, just kidding. Uh, he did send some knives over to Blade Gallery. I don't know if they're going to be there. I don't know if they're not. But as I'm going down the exhibitor list, I know that uh, you know Blade Gallery does get their hands on some Anton knives. So if you've seen the Dragon Scale or Cracked Ice Nebula or, you know, the Dama Steel stuff that he does on the Front Flipper and the Flipper Tab Udikas, uh, you should definitely, definitely, definitely go take a look at Blade Gallery and see if they have any there to get picked up. So uh, one other exhibitor that I want to mention real quick, while we mention more exhibitors on, on the list, is uh, Rivers Edge Cutlery. Uh, one of their staff members is in a costume. It's in a he's in an avocado costume basically, and uh, I guess they're going to have a Blade show specific uh rec branded spider co it seems like another model like according to their instagram post and you can actually get it at blade show but the, obviously it's going to be limited quantities and uh it so this is like the early early way of getting one of them and all you got to do is walk up to this dude in the in the avocado costume and just go holy guacamole for a chance to purchase uh an rec uh, variation of a Spyderco model. They didn't say what it was, so you'll have to catch it at Blade Show. Well, that's funny. You know, I'm wondering if it's going to be the Danger Avocado now, you know, referencing the bombshell that was tubbed the Danger mm-hmm. Pickle. So uh, it'll be really interesting to see, especially since they do do the green. You or know. it could be the 20 CV version of the PM3 REC. Yeah, it could be. That'd be cool. Yeah, who knows, you know, but that's why you got to go to Blade Show to find out, right? Yep, pretty much. Free promotion. <laughs> you, you heard it here first. No. Um, all right. So the next guy I want to talk about is Chavez. Uh, Chavez Knives. Uh, they have the scapegoat that's going to get released soon. I'm hoping that he's got one. That's one of the things I am excited for. If you don't know, the scapegoat has been selected to be the new model. Uh, that is uh, the Facebook group model that we all pre-ordered. It was supposed to be out in May. Now it's June. I'm hoping that it comes out after Blade Show. So I'm hoping that he's got one there. Uh, the scapegoat, the, I got the scapegoat street. I guess that's it, right? It, uh, mm-hmm. And the scapegoat street is, uh, kind of, if I had to say, it's almost like a rotten design blade with that wonky ass point on there uh, with a lot of belly. Uh, yeah right and it's uh, 3.4 yeah. inches a seven and three quarters so i really think it's going to be a great knife hopefully the pocket clip supposedly they were going to come at two different pocket clips one with the skull one without but i haven't heard one way or the other officially on that uh but yeah so um chavez is an exhibitor that i think uh you know you should definitely check out uh, next one is chris reeves of course let's see what's the steel that they were talking about uh, do you remember? Chris Reeves? It's like it's like Magna or something. Yeah, I can't think about what the hell it's Here, called. Let, let, let me let me look it up. You Google it while I keep looking down the list. Uh, Custom Knife Factory. 
Uh, they're another one. They've got the Brutus that's coming out that I think they're going to have available to buy at uh, uh, Blade. And uh, I know my buddy Justin has already asked me to find somebody to proxy that for him because he thinks it looks hot fire. I think it looks, um, you know, if Chunky Monkey was a knife. I think that's what I would call the Brutus. But, you know, that's what's great. Everything is about interpretation. Uh, Clark Customs going to be there. That makes some really cool front flippers. My buddy Brandon had one a little while back that he really enjoyed. Uh, again, I'm literally scrolling down the list of the, oh, Demco. So Demco released a video this week, the first 100 knives of the AD 20 and a half are going to be serialized. And, you know, it's funny because they were joking about reserving the right to keep the quantities of one, two, and three available for the archives. So if you want four through 100, I would say get to the uh, Demco booth early. I know you're going to be fighting off guys like Joey Fanta and uh, a whole <laughs> bunch of other guys that are all about the Demco uh, 80, 20, 80, 15, 80, 20 and a half. Uh, you know, shark lock mechanism, and uh, you might have to throw some elbows to get one of 100. But if you didn't know about that, that is definitely one to check out. Are you still waiting for uh, Magna, or did you give up? I'm I'm trying to find it. Magma, Magnus. It's Magnumit Steel or something like that. Yeah, no, it's not Maximit. I think you're trying to blend six things together at the same time. No, it's, uh, it's it's like magnumate steel or something like that. I'm uh, probably mispronouncing it. Fly titanium is going to be there. So if you want some blade scales for your PM2 or your bug out, I know fly titanium makes some pretty cool stuff. Uh, Fox knives is going to be there. Um, who else? Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go to the next. I mean, uh, I'm going to be almost at H. And, you know, Rick Kinderer is going to be there. I would definitely check out some of the stuff that he's got. I'm sure he's going to do something special for Blade Show because why wouldn't he? Uh, who right. else? Uh, still going down, still going down. Uh, John Gray is going to be there. And in order to talk about John Gray, I also want to talk about Nick Chopin. So uh, John Gray and Knives and Nick Chopin, NCC, uh, are going to be there. He's going to have some um, uh, BBMs there. So if a BBM is a knife that you really want to get your hand on, I would certainly recommend going to John Gray's booth where Nick is going to be hanging out and taking a look at some of his stuff. Uh, I did pass over uh, JB Knife and Tool. They're going to be there. Um, they might have some cool stuff I see on the uh, custom knives. Uh, K-Bar is going to be there. I don't know if they're doing anything new. I've been so out of the loop on K-Bar stuff. Uh, how you doing over there? Did you figure out Max <clears throat> Magna? No, still not. No, but like uh, they also have their fixed blades in 4V. That, That's like... cool. Yeah, I remember them talking about that. So uh, Culling Knives, while I'm here, is going to be at booth 334. Uh, obviously, you can uh, take a look on the website and uh, you can get all this information there. Um, shit, I forgot Brown Knives. Uh, Craig Brown is going to be there, and everybody knows, you know, I'm all about Craig Brown and Brown Knives, so if you have a chance to go over to Craig Brown, he is going to be releasing his new uh, Cortex that has titanium scales. I believe it's a frame lock with a lock bar insert, and it looks hot fire. Uh, I cannot wait to get on his books. I'm going to get one of those, hopefully, with a spider hole. Uh, the ones that he's shown so far do not have a spider hole. They do have a fuller, uh, but, you know, I'm thoroughly excited. He has some awesome milling patterns, some also an awesome anno, and, uh, man, am I looking forward to that. I really, really am. Um, it's it's like they deleted that post, like, from their Instagram page. Really? Wow. Well, I mean, even more of a reason to go check that out. Uh, what's uh, Cody Usler? No, um, uh, what's the K? Uh, Kenan uh, Son, right? I don't know how they say that. Kenan Son Knives. Uh, definitely go check out Kenan Son Knives at 41K. Uh, I say that because the Alpha, and from what I was reading, from what I heard, the Alpha, they did their 100th um, Alpha. 
And if you haven't seen the Alpha, it's a very, very unique piece. And I dig it. It's big. It's chunky. Uh, but from what I read, that's going to be the last of it. So if that's the case, then, uh, you know, you want to get your hands on one. That might be your last chance to get one. Um, Definitely. Um, so honestly, the Chris Reeves table, aside from like the 4V and like that mystery steel, um, I'm probably i'm most excited about the s45 vn rollouts of like their regular models like i like uh th they've been trickling in like on their small versions like their small and cosies and small subenzas s45 vn like i mean the large and cosy that i just got like that was just by chance so that means either at blade show they might have like other models such as like the s45 vn zan maybe but what would be cool is to see like uh large 31s finally in s45 vn because that's the final model i think in their standard production to get the s45 vn treatment other than like their slip joints and stuff like that yeah i haven't seen any 31s yet you know i think i've seen a couple of small and cosies did you get a small or a large and cosy i got a large and cosy uh, that's great man it's a great pickup but uh, yeah it's just funny like you said none of the 31s i've seen it yet so uh you know and that's... and that's and that's the thing like uh, like if if knife center decides to like next month or whatever just be like oh dlc in cosies are like being shipped out now to people who pre-ordered it like back in the fall like me and they just happen to be s45 vn i'm just going to like resell this knife for like what i paid for and it will move fast dump and run baby dump and because run. it's still pretty rare oh yeah for sure like, uh, I picked it up on Monkey's Edge and immediately went sold out. So I'm pretty sure I picked up the only one, like, hey, in very the well American market. Been. Yeah. Has to be. Has to be. Yeah. Uh, so Lion Mon is going to be there. I don't know if I said that right. But uh, he had a lot of hype earlier this year. But uh, he does some cool he was, in, he was in some controversy with some YouTuber. Yep. Yeah. Maybe you can ask him about that. But you know, if you probably, don't, probably not, just check out his knives because he yeah. makes some good stuff. Uh, R.J. Martin is going to be there. Uh, you know, I don't have any direct uh, uh, knowledge on R.J. Martin knives, but I know he did the Russian Overkill uh, collaboration with Shiro, and that was a badass knife, a four-inch knife on rollers. Uh, McNeese is going to be there. Uh, Medford's going to be there. Uh, Mick Strider Customs, Microtech uh did i miss somebody i wanted to say no um oh also protech if you guys are fans of protech uh protech will be there with blade show exclusive malibus there's going to be two variations one i think is a stonewash version with like uh numbering on it i think it's uh from one to 200 and then there's a all black with a special pivot uh malibu that they're going to be selling and they're pro they're going to be super popular and like hot commodity so like it, if you have a chance to stop by the protect table like especially like early on like with the early bird pass like i'd highly recommend to do so because malibus are always a really good pickups yeah for sure especially in the uh blue with the uh, reverse tanto seems to be one of the hottest ones out there unless you find one with uh titanium scales because uh the Malibus typically come in aluminum. Yeah, like uh, back when I was collecting, like first collecting knives, like I spent like probably, well, no, I called around like to like di just different mom and pops, and uh, I found a Warncliffe all DLC uh, Malibu for like just table, and then I ended up spending like three hundred bucks on a uh, all DLC. Uh, reverse tanto one and i sold them both and like got my money's worth back so like i didn't lose any money right. but uh the prices on those are coming down oh i know yeah yeah i mean uh the malibu is a little too small for me uh i didn't care for it i got rid of it as soon as i had it but i know a lot of people enjoy it so good for them enjoy yep. it yeah right, so uh nighthawk custom is going to be there i know they make firearms and I do a you know some really cool stuff uh, I'd be interested to stop by and see what type of knives Nighthawk Custom has. Um, who else we got here? Um, 
Uh, Olamic is going to be there. If you haven't seen Olamic's engraved knives, you should definitely check them out. Uh, they really do some cool stuff with the Marvel theme. Uh, a couple of the knives, I think they were whippersnappers. One was uh, Venom and the other one was Spider-Man. If you haven't had a chance to go take a look, uh, I mean, really high quality, high quality stuff. Uh, Pena knives are going to be there. I would definitely check them out. My buddy Justin, again, has been all over uh, the Mula. I know uh, Will and Be Wild has been all over it. Uh, I don't you know. I know Pena is, I don't know if he's going to have production knives from Riot there or not, but, you know, and then all of us, you know, also his custom stuff is awesome. So uh, you can either check out the X series stuff or, you know, his own uh, custom blades, but uh, definitely something to look at. A uh, recon one is going to have a table. So if you're upset that you missed the TKI special or the uh, other items that they had in Nashville or on the website right now, I'm sure they're going to have more at the uh, recon one table. They're 20 I, and I would definitely give them a look. Uh, I know I'm going to miss some people. Richard Rogers is going to be there. Richard Rogers and I are going to be there. Uh, like I said, Rick Hinderer is going to be there. Uh, who else is going to be there? Um, let me move over. And again, I'm, oh, uh, yeah, I keep going over people that I don't know. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't go check them out, you know, just because I don't know them or I don't recognize the name off the top of my head doesn't mean that, you know, they're not going to have something at that table that's really going to speak to you. So I would certainly, you know, walk everything. Uh, Simeon Customs, you know, Jamie Simeon does a great job. I had the Yeti Flipper that I sold uh, because I really, really, really liked the Untu. Uh, he just had some really cool knives. He had the Unbow over at uh, the Nashville Custom Knives. Uh, that was a really cool looking knife with a fuller on the top of it with a flipper. Uh, very cool design. I think you should definitely check out Simeon Custom uh, 6C40. I see there's 640 or 640. I know this is all wonky, but uh, definitely, definitely, definitely uh, check that out. Spider Co is going to be there. Of course, they're going to be. Uh, I'd be very interested to see what they have. Uh, who else? I'm still looking. Anybody? Uh, that uh, you think I forgot that I haven't talked about at this point. You pretty much covered everybody. Oh, I'm going down the list. If I missed anybody, it's only because I missed them as I was scrolling down the list. You know, I know uh, a lot of people aren't going to be there. Here we go. Vero is going to be there. Go see our buddy Turs. Uh, he will be leading the parade. Uh, they are booth <laughs> number 1146. And if you get a chance, uh, take a look at Joseph's Impulse. Uh, he's got a really hot impulse blue anodization and, uh, there's very, very few of those in that kind of condition. So, uh, if you want to take a look at your hands on one, there was only 250 of them made. I would definitely recommend that. And I only say that because we traded for it. So, <laughs> uh, VZ grips, if you got a 1911 or you got a ZT or you got a, you know, a firearm or a knife that they make aftermarket grips for they make some really cool aggressive g10 grips that you could uh put on your uh firearm or knife and uh can get some cool stuff there uh we knives is going to be there uh who else did i miss bird blades is bird blades going to be there uh who else i mean i know i'm gonna have to go through this one more time Aziba is out of New York. Uh, I forget his first name, but I had the S5 Koi and the S7 uh, Astro, and uh, he makes the MS3, some pretty cool stuff. Nice to have a uh, a local guy there, you know. Uh, I forget his first name. You remember his first name? Zeba? Michael Zeba. That was going to bug me, but I had to look that up. Uh, what else? Come on, am I missing anybody? Anything else? Not that I can think of. No, if you got your early bird ticket, you know, go there early, fight some people to be first in line, you know, get some beer in you, like we talked about last week. Uh, but definitely, definitely, definitely be safe. Always go in a group. I know that sounds dumb. Uh, oh, shit, is uh, CMF Metalworks going to be there, right? Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Where is it? C CMF, what do they call him? Uh, I think he's going to be there, right? No, I'm talking shit out my ass. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I just I, I didn't know about the CMF Metalworks, and I've been getting more into them. 
And then uh, who else? Uh, Luther. I know I talked to Luther, Eric Luther. He's going to be walking around. Uh, I don't think he has a table, but like I said, I know he's going to be walking around. Uh, who else? Cody. What's the guy's name? Cody Ulster, E-U-L-S-T-E-R. I always get that wrong. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be down there. I don't see his name on the list, but if he is and you see him, uh, he makes some cool stuff that I want to check out soon. Uh, you know, he makes the duck and the fuck, the D-U-K and the F-U-K. Uh, have you seen any of those? That's pretty much it, I think, for the list. All right. Uh, I can keep up. Oh, Fanatic Edge, are they going to be there? Yep, Fanatic Edge. If you mm-hmm. want some customization done, I've had some um, stuff there. Blade oh, yeah. HQ is going to be there. Yep, and uh, Uther, Cody's going to be there. His booth is uh, 15A. Uh, go take a look. You know, Emerson's going to be there. Essie's going to be there. Benchmade, Benchmade going to be there. I'm sure they're going to be there. Honestly, you could just like link the list in the description. I of, know, like... but I'm having so much fun being salty <laughs> about all the stuff that I'm going to tell my buddy who's going to be my proxy to go take a look, you know? Yep, Benchmade's going to be there. But yeah, I know I'm rambling on. I'll go take a look at the list. But uh, what are you most excited? If you were to go down there, uh, I if guess. If I were to go down there, I would hit up. Uh, Actually, you forgot one. Three Rivers Manufacturer, the TRM. Uh, TRM. See that? I knew I was going to miss somebody. Yeah. Um, so o- only because like they have the full TI shadow at Blade Show, and I think there's only going to be a handful of them. So like, that's a that's a sleeper table to hit up. Yeah, huh? And um, I know um, Brandon from the Barrow Chat. Uh, mm-hmm. he's been all over the American Blade Work stuff. Remember, it's not Vero Chat anymore. It's just regular chat. It'll forever be the Vero Chat. Vero chat, Vero <laughs> chat. Uh, Arizona Custom Knives are going to be there. You can mm-hmm. ask them why their prices are so high on the website for some of the stuff that they have. You know, you're like, hey, there's a knife I saw on Facebook for five hundred dollars, and for some do they have rare shit though? Oh, they or- do, definitely do. And I'm not talking bad about that. You know, it's just. Sometimes you go and find a knife. You're like, oh, well, what's Arizona Custom? What do they sell it for? And it's like $800 more than what's on Facebook. And you're like, can I trust that number? Is this really a good deal? Or is that price just inflated because they get hot shit and they can command what they want for the hot shit, you know? It's like eBay for knives, basically. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, it's a good place to get a starting point and get some information. I usually, you know, I was breaking chops about the guy that didn't know the size of the knife that I had. Uh, I will mm-hmm. go to Arizona Custom Knives because a lot of times they'll give you some information, blade steel, overall length, that kind of stuff. And it's a great starting point when you want to look at a knife that you're not too familiar with, you know? Well, looky here. Um, full, D- full DLC. Hold on. A Gen 2 Arius that has the um, black handle, black pivot, bronze hardware, black blade, but then like not fully black blade. You know what I'm talking about? I do with the polished on top. Yeah. So that's for 900 bucks. I thought those would be like a little bit more expensive. It's a Gen uh, 2 and it's used. Look at it. Scroll down. Does it say used? Previously owned knife. Previously owned, not previously used. Well, I know, but previously <laughs> owned. But yeah, <clears throat> but it's a Gen 2, and Gen 2s are all taking a back seat, especially with the hot fire Gen 4s that are coming out now. Right. But still, I mean, like, it's still, I, I would pick that up for 900 bucks. Shit. No, oh, yeah, for sure. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, listen, we can't not talk about Knife Joy. Uh, the guys over at Knife Joy do good stuff. Uh, what else? Uh yeah, I mean I'm I'm excited to not be going because I wish that I was going and I'm jealous of everybody <laughs> that's going and I can't wait for all you guys to sell your hot fire knives that you're hoarding that you're going to have to sell because you spent too much money on Blade Show. So I would I would hit up okay, so in order, I would probably hit up the Codenick table first, CRK, Brian Brown, TRM, and then everybody else. I go to Craig Brown and Craig did an awesome job. I have a Zerk milled cortex. The handles are zirconium. And uh, he did a great job milling underneath the pocket clip. So it could slide in and out of the pocket. And I want to see how big his balls are. He sent two cortex, the Zerk one with a table of 1500 and my, uh, black and green carbon fiber cortex with the carbon, um, you know, just a standard 851. 
He sent the both of them in a priority flat rate box with no tape. Oof. No tape. Now, it's in a Pelican case. I ain't worried about it getting wet. But no tape. I mean, listen, Craig, how big are your balls? I might even just give you a little grab just to say, no, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I couldn't believe you sent that with no tape, you know? But God bless you. I mean, obviously, you would have replaced it. You would have made things right. So uh, it was just really funny. And uh, that would probably be the first thing that I would do, just to ask, you know, and then also to take a look at some of that hot fire cortex stuff he's got going on. Well, I don't know, man. It's been about an hour. I don't yeah, think anybody's I, still listening. If they are, <laughs> God bless you. Uh, I wish we had somebody on here that did have a little bit of insight of what they were excited to do while they were down there but uh you know everybody's gonna want to come on the channel next week to tell us all about all the hot fire that they had and that they got and that they're going to showcase on facebook instagram and everywhere else so that they could show everybody what they don't have that pocket flex that's but, it man yeah anyways so let's wrap things up since we're at the hour mark probably Yep. Well, uh, again, I am Joe Bravo, Mumbo Bravo B Knife Reviews, and you can find me on Instagram, Watson and the Shark, and uh, Dryan. And I'm Dryan. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at NYC Knife Life. That is basically where I post pictures of all my knives. All right, guys. Well, if you are going to Blade, let us know. If you're scoring something at Blade, let us know. Then go fuck yourself. Uh, <laughs> leave a comment on what you're most excited for and where you're from and if you're going uh, just so that we could see what everybody and all the hype is before the show and if the hype meets reality I don't mean to steal that guy's tagline but it'd be great to see if the thing that you were excited about really lived up to it or not so you mm -hmm. guys will have a great week enjoy Blade and uh, be safe can't wait to hear from you See you guys.